Okay, let's uh, continue looking at the complex conjugate theorem and let's look at a few applications of it. So first of all, let's think about the complex conjugate theorem. The complex conjugate theorem says that if a plus bi, where b is not equal to zero, that is if an imaginary zero is a zero of a polynomial function, f of x, then a minus bi is also a zero of f of x. In other words, um, whenever you have an imaginary zero, it's conjugate, it's complex conjugate will also be an imaginary zero. Another way to say that is imaginary zeros always come in pairs. All right, that's the complex conjugate theorem. So let's apply it. And the first example we'll look at is let's write the linear factorization of g of x, where this is g of x, x to the fourth plus 8x to the third minus 16x squared plus 32x minus 80, if 2i is zero. Now, the first thing is if 2i is zero, that means that minus 2i is also a zero, which means that x minus 2i and x plus 2i are factors and if both of those are factors then we can multiply that out and if we foil that out we get x squared plus 2ix minus 2ix minus 4i squared mm, this and this cancel the i squared is a minus 1 so in other words x squared plus 4 is also a factor. Now if x squared is a factor then we can divide g of x by x squared plus 4 to figure out what the remaining factors will be. So let's do that. I'm going to use polynomial long division here. So I'm going to do x squared plus 4 divided into x4 plus 8x to the 3 minus 16x squared plus 32x minus 80. And let's divide this. x squared goes next for x squared times. Let's multiply. That's x to the 4 plus 4x squared. Now watch, I have to put this underneath the x squared then I'm going to subtract 0, 8x to the third. That's minus 16 minus minus 4. That's minus 20x squared plus 32x minus 80. Now I'm going to look at the 8x to the third and see what x squared times what is 8x to the third. And that's going to be 8x. And that's going to be 8x to the third. And then that's 32x. And then I'm going to subtract those. I get 0, 0. I bring down the minus 20x squared, minus 80. x squared into minus 20x squared, that's minus 20 times. And then I multiply, that's a minus 20x squared and minus 80. And I'm going to subtract minus 20, minus minus 20, 0, minus 80, minus minus 80. That's 0 as well. So in other words, my original problem, g of x, can be factored into x squared plus 4 times x squared plus 8x minus 20 without a remainder. And I'm not done yet because I can continue factoring. x squared plus 4, I already know, is going to be x plus 2i, x minus 2i x squared plus 8x minus 20, that's going to be a plus and a minus. What two numbers multiply to 20 and add to 8? That's going to be a 10 and a 2, and it's going to be a positive 10 and a minus 2. So that's the linear factorization. And if you notice, I have one imaginary zero, so I have two imaginary zeros that come in a pair. 
and then I have a total of four zeros, two real and two imaginary. And if you look at the original problem, it's the fact that it, we know that if 2i is a 0, then minus 2 is also a 0 that allows us to end up with the final linear factorization. Let's do another problem. Let's write the equation of a polynomial with the following zeros, 3, minus 5, and 4i. Well, f of x is going to equal to x minus 3, because 3 is a 0, then x minus 3 is a factor, times x plus 5, because if minus 5 is a 0, then 5 is a factor, 4i, so that's going to be an x minus 4i, but we also know that if 4i is a 0, then minus 4 must also be a 0. And if minus 4 is also a 0, then that means x plus 4i will also be a factor. Now to write this in standard form, we need to multiply these out. If you have two imaginary binomials, the first thing you want to do is make sure and multiply those together. It will also be pretty easy to factor these two binomials together. That's x squared plus 5x minus 3x. That's a plus 2x minus 15. This is going to be x squared. It's going to be a plus 4ix minus 4ix minus 16i squared. The 4ix and the minus 4x cancel. i squared is minus 1, so that's x squared plus 16 times x squared plus 2x minus 15. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute. First, I'm going to distribute the x squared, and I get x to the fourth plus 2x to the third minus 15x squared, and then I'm going to multiply the 16. 16x squared. I'm going to put it under the other x squared because I'm going to add them together. 16 times 2x is going to be 32x. And 16 times minus 15, that's going to be 160 and 80. That's going to be a minus 240. So my final answer is going to be x to the fourth plus 2x to the third plus x squared plus 32x minus 240. Let's box that, send it home. You can also use this theorem to answer kind of some thought questions here. So let's look at these. First of all, if g of x is a polynomial function of degree 7, then what is the maximum number of real zeros? Well, the key is this. The number of real zeros and imaginary zeros is equal to 7. In order for to have the maximum number of real zeros, you need the minimum number of imaginary zeros. It's entirely possible that you have no imaginary zeros, so the maximum number of real zeros is 7. Let's do the next question. If g of x is a polynomial function of degree 7, if g of x has three real zeros, how many imaginary zeros does it have? Well, real plus imaginary has to equal 7. So 3 plus what is equal to 7? So the answer is, is it has four imaginary zeros. Is it possible to have four imaginary zeros? It is. They always come in pairs, so that's two pair of imaginary zeros. And the last question is, what is the minimum number of real zeros? And if the degree is 7, you might think there could be possibly be no real zeros, but that's actually not the case. The maximum number of imaginary zeros in this case is 6, because imaginary zeros always come in pairs, so you can't have 7 imaginary zeros. So the maximum number of imaginary is 6, so 7 minus 6 is 1, so you have at least one real zero. And that's the complex conjugate theorem and a couple of examples and applications.